Good morning, grade 9, and our new lesson today is radical expressions and rational exponents. Uh, algebra 2, chapter 5, lesson 6. Okay. Uh, what we're going to take today about uh, exponents and uh, radical signs and so on. So, for example, here uh, 5 and negative 5 are square roots of 25 because 5 squared equals to 25 and negative 5 squared is also equal to 25. 2 is the cube root of 8 because 2 cubed equals 8. Okay girls, 2 and negative 2 are fourth roots of 16 because 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16 and negative 2 to the power 4 is also equal to 16 which means in some, some, not all, in some cases I will get the final answer if I had 2 or negative 2, if I have a positive number or a negative number. Okay, girls, A is the nth root of B if A to the power n is equal to B. The nth root of a real number A can be written as the radical expression I will <coughs> write the radical sign and A and N. N is called index, where N is the index. Okay, girls. Plural indices of the radical and A is the radicant and A is the radicant. When a number has more than one real root the radical sign indicates only the principal or positive rule when a number when a number has more than one real root the radical sign indicates only the principal or positive root uh, if we're going to focus on this table this table is so important so important. We have to memorize it well. Okay, girls, because from this table we'll be, we will be able to solve all the problems. This table shows us numbers and types of real roots. Numbers and types of real roots. The first case. If I have an odd index, n this n okay girls this n if n is odd i will have one real root okay girls let me before i will continue this table will tell you or will be divided into two parts we're talking about the index and we will talk about the radicand. We will talk about the index and we will talk about the radicand. When we talk about the index, we will say odd or even. When we are going to talk about the index, we will say odd or even. But when we are going to talk about the radicand, we will say positive or negative. Okay, so this table divides this formula into two parts the index and the radicand index i will say it's odd or even the radicand i will say it is positive or negative okay so the first case that i have if the index is odd but some of you will tell me that if the index is odd and the radicand is positive or if the index is odd and the radicand is ne negative no I have one root. 
the index is and it is applied on the positive and negative radicand. If the index is odd, is only one rule. If it is odd, if it is odd and positive radicand, if it is odd and negative radicand, it is only one rule. I will get one real root. I will get one real root. The real third root of eight. The real third root of eight. If I will write it like this. Okay, the radical sign. And the real, um, the third root, third, third, so the index is three. So the index is three. And the radicand is eight. And the radicand is eight. So here I have the index is an odd number. The index is an odd number. So if the index is an odd number, I will get only one real root. I will get only one real root. For example, the real third root of eight is two. I will ask myself, which number? If I multiply by itself three times it will give me eight why three times because the index is three i will ask myself which number if i multiply by itself three times it will be eight and again why it is three times it will be because the index is three so it is two okay girls so the real third root of eight is two. Okay, girls? Okay, let's go for the second case. If I have the index even, even index and positive radicand, even index and positive radicand, I will get two real roots, two real roots. Like the real fourth root of 16. The real fourth root of 16. Okay. And here I will write. Which number, if I multiply it by itself four times, it will be 16, it is two. Or negative two, because if I multiply two by two by two by two, it will give me 16. If I multiply negative two by negative two, will cancel the negative sign, negative two by negative two, will cancel the negative sign, so it will give me also 16. So the second rule is, if I have the index is even and the radicand is positive, positive, so I will get two real roots, like positive two and negative two. What about even index and negative radicand, even? Index and negative radicon. Okay, like this one. Any negative radicand for an even index will be zero real roots. Any negative Radicand for an even index will, will, will give me zero real roots. Negative 16 has no real fourth root. 
no real fourth root. So put it in your mind. If the radicand is negative and the index is even, even, not odd, even. So I will get zero real roots. Even index and negative radicand will give me zero real roots. Because the negative radicand with the odd index will give me one real root. Okay? So only the negative radicand with the even index will give me zero real roots. Okay, radicand of zero. Zero is one root of zero. Any radicand of zero will be zero. The third root of zero is zero. The fourth root of zero, any radicand that is zero, the root, it has one root that is zero. see this one find all real roots <clears throat> find all real roots of 81 uh, sorry fourth roots of 81 fourth root of 81 so the end here is four so it is even, it is even. Let me write above it, fourth root, so it is even. Okay, and the radicand, which is 81, is positive. So if I have an even index, and positive radicand, it will give me two real roots. This would be the second case. If I have even index and positive radicand, it will give me two real roots, like 81, fourth root of 81. I will write 81 here, and I will say, which number? If I multiply by itself four times, it will give me 81. It is three. It is three. Okay, girls, it is three. But I will not write three. I will write three and negative three. Three and negative three. A positive number has two real fourth roots because 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81 and negative 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81 so the roots are 3 and negative what are the steps that you're going to follow to answer this kind of question first of all you're going to do like this exactly like this fourth roots of 81 fourth is the index so the index here is 4 4 as an index, so it is even. And 81 is the radicand, so the radicand is positive. So even index and positive radicand. So I'm going to go to the table. So even and positive will give me two real roots. So now I know that my answer will be two real roots. So now, go to 81. I will ask myself. They want the fourth root. I will ask myself. 81 which number when i multiply to itself four times it will be 81 is it two try from the smallest numbers is it two two multiplied by two is four multiplied by two is eight multiply two multiplied by two is four four multiplied by two is eight eight multiplied by two is 16 so it's not let's take the three try the three 3 multiplied by 3 is 6. 6 multiplied by 3. Um, 3 multiplied by 3 is 9. 9 multiplied by 3 is 27. 27 multiplied by 3 is 81. So it is 3. Because when I multiply 3 by itself 4 times, it will give me 81. 3 times 3, 9. Here, 3 times 3, 9. 
9 times 3, 27. 27 times 3, 81. So it is 3. But we said that I will have two real roots. So I will say it is 3 and negative 3. Okay. B. Cube roots of negative, negative 125. So the first step. Let me write here. Cube roots cube is 3. So the index is 3. And negative 125. So the radicand is negative. So I have a rule for the odd. Sorry. I have a rule for the odd index, which is the first one. Odd index. If the radicand is positive or the radicand is negative, I have a rule for them. If the index is odd, so I have one real root. So, a number that I will multiply by itself three times, it will be negative 125. So I will write it here. A number. When I multiply by itself three times, it will be negative 125. It seems that it is 5. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. And 25 multiplied by 5 is 125. But it is negative 125. So what about using the negative sign? Negative 5 multiplied by negative 5 is 25. 25 multiplied by negative 5, it is negative 125. So if, if the number here is 125, only positive 125, so the root is positive 5. If here the answer is negative 125, so the root is positive 5. But only one root. Only one root. And its sign is according to the answer sign. Okay, girls? It is only one root. Only one root. It will be negative 5 or positive 5. So how I will know? According to this sign. According to this sign. If it is negative, so my answer is negative 5. If it is positive, so my answer is positive 5. Okay. C. Sixth root of negative 725. Sixth root. So the index is 6. 6 is even. And the radicand is negative. So let's go to the table. Even and negative, so zero real roots. So you are lucky if you find this kind of uh, problems, if the index is even and the radicand is ne negative. Okay, girls, let's solve also uh, 1A and 1B and 1C to make sure that we got it. Okay, girls, just wait one minute. Okay. Fourth root of negative 256. So I will do the same steps. Okay. Here. The index is 4, so it is even. And the radicand is negative. So what if I have even and negative? I am lucky. Zero real solution. <laughs> so I will write down zero real no real solutions. Zero real solutions. Zero real roots. This is for one A. Zero is okay. One B. Sixth roots of one. Sixth, so the index is even, even, 
and one is positive number so even and positive will give me two real roots two real roots so one of course it will be positive one and negative five last one that is uh, c uh, cube roots of 125 cube means three and three is odd and 125 is a positive number so odd and any other any other predicate it will be one real root and this real root will take the sign of what is here 125 is positive so it will take this positive sign so it will be five so the answer will be five Okay, girls, um, let's watch here uh, this video. Hey, we all know about square roots, but now I want us to think about other roots and actually realize that we can actually think of a root in some funny way as an exponent. All right, so first of all, let's just begin with stuff that we know. Suppose I want to find uh, all the, the square roots of 25. And what does that mean? Well, if I want to find the square roots of 25, what I want to do is I want to find numbers I'll call them x, which have the property that x squared will equal 25. That's what it means for x to be a square root of 25. So uh, are there any? Well, sure. 5 sort of stands out because 5 squared equals 25. There's actually another one, though. The other one is negative 5. Because if you take negative 5 and square it, you're going to actually get 25. So the square roots of 25, turns out that there are two of them. One is 5 and one is negative 5. And we can actually extend these ideas to higher roots. Let's take a look at some. Let's find all the fifth roots of 32. So what does that mean? I'm looking for a number that has the property that when I multiply it by itself, or namely raise it to the fifth power, I'm actually gonna get 32. So I'm looking for, looking for x such that x to the fifth equals 32. I want them all. What can we think of any? Um, well, yeah, the two. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 2 to the 5th equals 32. So x equals 2 is an answer. Maybe x equals negative 2 is an answer too. Is it? Well, no. Think about it. If I take negative 2 and raise it to the 5th power, then I'm multiplying negative 2 by itself an odd number of times. So what's the sign of that product? The sign of that product will be a negative. So the answer is negative 2 to the fifth would actually equal negative 32, which doesn't equal 32. So it turns out there's only one real fifth root of 32, and that turns out to be 2. So here's only one answer, namely 2. Let's try another one. All right, here we go. Let's find all the cube roots of negative 64. So that means I want to find all x such that x cubed equals negative 64. What must be the sign of x? Is it positive or negative? Well, when I multiply it by itself three times, it's going to be negative. That means the number itself has to be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive times a negative again will give me a negative. So what could x possibly be? Well, negative 4. 
Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. Anything else? No. It's only one cube, real cube root of negative 64. Cool. Let's try one more. Let's find all the fourth roots of negative 625. So here I want to find, calling all x such that x to the fourth equals negative 625. What real number satisfies that? Well, think about it. Suppose you have a number in your head, x. I multiply it by itself again and again. Whether x is positive or negative, what about x times x? It will definitely be positive. Because if they're both positive, then the product is positive. If they're both negative, the product is positive again. So this is going to always be greater than or equal to 0. How could it ever equal negative 625? It can't. So if we are looking for an even root of a, uh, of a negative number, we see there are no real solutions to that. In the previous example, when we're looking for the cube root, that was an odd root. We can actually have odd roots of negative numbers. That's completely fine. But we can't have even roots of negative numbers. There are no real numbers that will actually satisfy that. So here, the answer is a find all x. There are no x. There are new real x. So that's maybe sort of sad. Maybe puts a tear to your eye. But the point is, that's the truth. So you got to be careful with roots. We can't take an even root of a negative number. Okay, girls, we're done from this uh, part today. And we're going to complete the next uh, part, next lesson. See you on Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tada, for attending today.